Hey everyone. Hey. Hey. So I'm Curran. I've been uh, helping these great folks work on this project, VZ Code, which has been just awesome. And we've made a ton of progress this semester. I'm really excited for this presentation. The problem that this is trying to solve is that, I mean, what I do is data visualization client services. And people that work in teams that do that kind of work, there's a lot of friction when you switch between tools. So the idea is just to bring people into one space, one tool that all the different kinds of people can use when they're doing data viz work. So VZ Code is a multiplayer code editing environment, meaning multiple people can edit at the same time. So this is uh, just general organization with our uh, repo and stuff like that. So we, like, mainly for delegating the, our certain issues and stuff like that, we used the issues listed on GitHub, and then we also had a Kanban board, which was very nice to see what we're working on actively, and just general information on where our repo is located and what license we use. So the, the technology stack is Node.js, React, ShareDB, CodeMirror, and Vite. It's part of this product I'm working on called VizHub, and that's what this looks like here. It's the editor portion of this. So let me start talking about some of the features. There are interactive widgets. Uh, Jack, I'll let you speak on these, because you did a lot of work on these. So I worked on mainly two features. First, are interactive widgets. An interactive widget is a feature in which you can press Alt and intuitively use your mouse to edit your code. I, we already had a number dragger, so I added a color picker, and also this little circle you can see next to the color, it shows the color live, so you can see in the code what color your hex code represents. From there, I also add more features, including you can press all to highlight all the interactable text. So even if you don't know what all the interactable text is before using the software, you can find out just by pressing all and hide everything. There's also the VEX2 interactive widget, you can move up and down left and right, X, Y, X and Y, that kind of thing. Lastly, there's the rotate widget, where you press Alt on the word rotate and move your mouse around, and that around the gray circle, and the angle between the X axis and your mouse is the angle it puts into the um, parameter. You see, if I wait for a second, you'll see how the angle is indicated by that black line. I also added AI Assist. It's powered by GPT-4, uh, you can see here an example. It continues your code based off the, all the open tabs you have, all the text and all the open tabs. You can start it by doing Control M or by pressing that little zap icon in the corner. It'll, it'll finish automatically, or if you want to halt it, you can press Control M again or click the icon again. But this time it'll show a square, a stop square. And I want to, I want to just point out that this is amazingly cool. I mean. The AI is writing this code. So you start with this, you write a comment to tell it what you want, and then you press this button, and then the AI starts typing directly into your editor, just like a, someone who's typing remotely. You know, it's super cool. I'm so excited that this works. So thank you for your great work on this. There are also presence cursors. Yeah, so I worked a lot on improving the presence of remote users. Um, so one of the things I did was um, displaying the username of the remote user near the cursor, as you can see. Um, I also in, um, let users be able to see like the remote selections. Um, as you can see, the, the color of the cursor and the selections are the same, and that's unique to each user, which allows the local user to be able to keep track of um, who's editing what in the file. Um, another feature that I added is presence notifications. So when someone joins or leaves a session, you'll see an alert on the bottom right um, that says it will show the username and whether they just joined or left the session. Uh, one of the major features I was working on this semester was getting TypeScript working in our code editor. Um, it offers a lot of great features and really improves the user experience and just the overall code writing experience within the editor. So uh, first thing we utilized with our TypeScript was uh, 
we added intelligent auto completions. So we have TypeScript running in a web worker now, and we pass in the what the user's writing, and it allows us to get all these wonderful TypeScript uh, features. And the auto completions are, as most of us are aware, auto completions are very helpful. Proves speed at writing code and also helps prevent errors and makes it easier to write. Uh, next feature was we got TypeScript linting. So this gives us a more robust error codes and stuff like that. So while you're writing your code, you can see before it runs and stuff like that what your what possible conflicts you've got going on. Or um, just general errors really improves uh, debugging and helps before you run into something big. Uh, moving forward, however, uh, it's not the end with TypeScript. These are the only two major features we have running in the code editor. Uh, hoping for, in the future, getting uh, automatic type acquisitions. So you can import a library or something like that. And you can also get TypeScript errors and through the linting and also through auto completions, you can get stuff like that. And then there's also uh, hover typing. So you can like hover over a variable and then you can get type information. Uh, these are also two major features we can get through our uh, TypeScript server we got running in our web worker. Uh, it can really improve uh, the code editor experience. Uh, I worked on various UX improvements. Um, so I implemented uh, some file manipulation keyboard shortcuts, uh, better UI for file renaming and deleting, um, file name validation, so making sure that an inputted file name is proper, and uh, updated some tab list behavior. So here's the file creation keyboard shortcut. So you can't see in the GIF, but the user hit Alt-N, and they were prompted with this new modal to create a file name. And on the next loop, um, you can notice how, here, let's wait one second, the create file button on the bottom right is grayed out. Uh, and it will be grayed out until a valid file name is entered. And once that's entered, the file is obviously created. Um, deleting a file, uh, also got a new modal for deleting the file uh, confirmation window to make sure that the file that you're deleting, uh, you want to delete that file. Um, it also lists the name of the file that you want to delete just for extra confirmation. Yeah, so I also worked on some uh, user experience stuff. Um, one of them is, so instead of using your uh, mouse to delete a file, instead you can, instead of that, you can just press the enter key. and um, if you want to, if you don't want to delete anymore, and instead of pressing cancel, you can just press the key. Uh, I also uh, updated the tab list behavior. So previously, the tab list, if it were too long, it would go off screen, um, which was not the expected behavior. So it just simply added a, a scroll bar on the top that disappears when the tab list is small, um, smaller than the editor window. So. So the feature I worked on was the prettier error overlay. The way the overlay works is through our custom use prettier hook that checks the file for any syntax errors. If a syntax error is found, then the overlay pops up. In addition to that, we add some uh, to make it, we made it more user friendly, allowing the user to exit out or press the escape key in case they wanted to hide the syntax error for the moment. And we also made sure that when the user is switching between files, the overlay disappears just so it doesn't become a nuisance. Thank you guys for your time. All right. So I, I just want to say thank you so much for everybody. Uh, everybody did amazing work, and I'm really thrilled at how this worked out. And thank you again for the opportunity to uh, participate at Arcos. So thank you, everyone. <laughs>